Twitter tributes were very, very nice and very touching and, you know, a bit overwhelming at some point because I think, if, you know, when you lose an election, you kind of feel that you, you know, you failed in some way or you haven't actually delivered for people and in fact what they were saying was you know they were really thankful for the things that you have done but I do think it's also born out of the fact that we've realised that we can do so much better those of us on the left in terms of working together and, and you know and it's not about selling out on, on your ideas your ideology we prove in the European Parliament that we can work together even though we don't agree on everything in a, in a left-wing group so yes, where I'm a Republican, I'm, I'm a United Irelander, but I am a left-wing uh, activist. And what I would love to, the lessons from this is that the left, if we can just get some sort of coordination, even just around voting strategically, that we can maximise the number of elected reps that w the left returns, as opposed to actually handing seats over to Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil because we're fighting with each other. I think, you know, it's not about selling out on, on any political party's ideas, but it is about go thinking strategically. And if we can work out a way to cooperate more effectively, and we did it with Right to Water, and we proved that's why we, we were able to successfully stop water charges because the left came together and worked together and um, we just need to go back and do that again and, and think how can we maximize the left-wing vote and by doing that we can then show the tangible benefits to more people that when you vote left your life improves as opposed to uh, what's happening now is where they're, they're not seeing any tangible benefit to their life because the same political parties Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil just keep getting back in. I think one of the things that struck me during this campaign was sort of people are, are resigned to the fact that nothing can change, that their vote isn't important, that, you know, politics doesn't deliver for them. And for me, that's really, really concerning, not just because that affects me personally, if people don't go out and vote for you, but it's that, you know, it, it shows a failure of public service and public life if people are feeling that way and I think that for all of us now who are genuinely in politics for the right reasons to make people's lives better, uh, we have a body of work to go out and convince all of those voters who stay at home because they don't think their vote makes a difference to convince them that it does make a difference and that there is really an alternative possible that there is a better way that we can do things that we can deliver public services for people without massive overspends we can deliver them without them having to be privatized we can house our population we can tackle climate change uh, without punishing ordinary families so but it's for us to to convince them and we didn't do it this time, but I think that that's the body of work for me as an activist and as a Sinn Féin person, and I'm Sinn Féin to the core, is how do I do better the next time around and convince people that their vote matters, but also that there is, there is a real possibility of change if they engage in the political system. And Sinn Féin has, you know, huge ideas when it comes to housing and going back to the model of public housing and to move away from the speculative property market that we have in Ireland at the moment, which is the crash boom, that we create a stable housing market where, you know, nobody's living in fear of losing their house. Um, I think that would be certainly definitely one thing that we would have to do if we were in government. Second is the provision of good public services, so a public transport system that is public, publicly owned, well funded. And, um, you know, low cost, possibly even moving eventually to free public transport, but public transport and public services, a health service that delivers for its citizens. So the big things that really, really matter to people, and I think that that way then, if you've got good public services, if you've got secure housing, that issue then around the cost of living and the insecurity that people are feeling is removed. And um, so it's about doing better with what we have uh, and showing people that even within constraints of budgets, you can actually do so much better than what uh, the Irish people have been getting from the Fine Gael government. Obviously, Irish unity now is is front and centre in terms of Brexit has brought it into everybody's focus. So I think one of the things that we do need to have is that big conversation about the type of, of United Ireland we want and convincing people along the way that it's not just about, you know, uniting the country. It's about the potential to have an island that's so much better than what it is now delivering for its citizens. The border poll is when people are saying now is not the time and don't, you know, don't talk about it but yet we see 
like the public are far ahead of the government on this and you know they're open to the idea of a united ireland so we need to have a plan about when we're holding a border poll and also a, a plan of how we're going to actually win that poll um, and convince enough people but this idea that the government think that they can just bury their head in the sands when it comes to United Ireland uh, it's just it's not washing with the public uh, and the polls show you that that the public are now in the frame of mind of going yes we want a United Ireland so let's start having that conversation. Climate change has to be seen as an opportunity um, and that's one of the messages that's not getting out there so people are worried about it but it's been seen as that the only way you can tackle climate change is through punishing households or you know making people live their life in a different way but in fact it's actually a huge opportunity for us to create a society that invests in public transport that uh, you know makes it easier for people to get around whether that's on bicycles or on foot uh, you know the idea that we can have deposit return schemes which is such a simple method everybody knows the, the dogs in the street know that deposit return makes sense but yeah we have a government that's blocking it from coming in because it goes against the vested interests of big business and um, you know they're issuing licenses where instead what we can be doing is investing in green jobs instead of uh, you know exploring for more oil and gas let's invest in the renewable energy energies let's give people apprenticeships and retrofitting homes so not only are you dealing with climate change but you're also uh, lifting people out of fuel poverty so there's lots and lots of things that could be done on climate change um, that are really really positive but unfortunately we have uh, a government that believes that the only way you can tackle climate change is by picking the low-hanging fruit which is the households who are already struggling